Good morning. I'm still reporting on the Clintons. There are many side stories that have appeared as a result of Hillary Clinton's collapse shortly after leaving the New York City 9-11 event on Sunday. It takes a longer story than normal just to begin to keep up. For the first time, we got a look at the Black Secret Service medical van specially constructed for her developing medical problems. And it's a good thing that it was there because even though its side entry door is made as low to the ground as possible, still, according to an NYPD cop on the scene, Clinton's legs completely gave way and the Secret Service had to literally throw her into the vehicle like a side of beef. Secret Service protocol calls for a protectee experiencing a medical emergency to be transported to the nearest level one trauma center. During Clinton's 9-11 medical event, that would be Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan. However, a Clinton campaign operative ordered the Secret Service to change course and take the candidate to Chelsea Clinton's apartment in order to keep details of her medical treatment under wraps. Some believe that the entire reason Clinton bought the $11 million apartment for Chelsea in 2013 is to equip part of it as a secret and totally private medical facility because by then her Parkinson's disease had been discovered. Only a private facility taking in no members of the public as patients could avoid the intense record keeping of a public hospital and the truth would be bound to leak through hospital workers. So, after candidate Clinton arrived at Chelsea's apartment, the speculation is that Clinton got shot up with something and 90 minutes later was out front walking around displaying herself to the world's media. Did you notice that for the first time in months there were no Secret Service agents besides her when she emerged? This was very strange and fed rumors that her body double, Teresa Barnwell, had replaced her. However, this caused Barnwell to tweet out at 10, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on September 11th, I'm in Los Angeles today, not in New York City. The new campaign line was that Clinton had been diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday and was on antibiotics. However, her doctor didn't bother to say what kind of pneumonia, perhaps because someday soon she too may be facing scrutiny. According to campaign spokesman Glenn Kaplan, as soon as she got into the vehicle, she was feeling fine. Her preference was to go to Chelsea's. Based on an assessment of her condition and after having conferred with her physician, the staff and the Secret Service thought it was appropriate. Of course, it is absurd to claim that someone can recover from pneumonia in minutes or even 90 minutes. Pneumonia is a life-threatening illness characterized by a very high fever and persistent coughing. Improvement after treatment occurs within one to three days. But the Clinton team lies out of habit even when the truth would serve them better. However, there is one kind of pneumonia that can clear up very quickly. It's called aspirational pneumonia. It occurs when you inhale food or liquids into the lungs. This would fit exactly the nature of Parkinson's disease, which is frequently associated with swallowing disorders. According to one board-certified internist quoted in Powerline, aspirational pneumonia is commonly seen in neurological conditions like strokes and Parkinson's disease or similar diseases where the nerves to the swallowing mechanism are not working properly. This is especially worrisome because it is likely to recur given the underlying, usually incurable disease process and because it can be a life-threatening event. Another physician, Dr. Ted Noel, agreed that aspirational pneumonia associated with Parkinson's disease is the more likely choice. There's strong evidence that she has advanced Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a degenerative brain disease that has no cure. Its cause is unknown. Some treatments, such as levodopa, can help relieve symptoms initially, but as the disease progresses, levodopa becomes less effective, and involuntary writhing movements become more pronounced. PD afflicts about 1% of people over age 60. The average life expectancy following diagnosis is between 7 and 14 years. Michael J. Fox is a current sufferer, as was Muhammad Ali.
According to a report on WND, just days ago when the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons asked its membership and several thousand other doctors in an informal poll whether Hillary Clinton is exhibiting symptoms that could disqualify her from the presidency, a huge majority said yes. Besides the opinions of the medical community, Clinton's 9-11 attack torpedoed her already sagging poll numbers. This morning's USC Daybreak poll, which for the past week has showed no reaction to the ever-darkening swirl of emails and Clinton Foundation scandal news, suddenly took a dramatic turn, a three-point reversal in a single day. That's just what the Dems didn't want to hear, and that is why Democrat leaders are now searching for an alternative that could give them a reliable advantage. Although it is doubtful they will choose to replace Clinton without something even more dramatic happening, such as another medical event on the upcoming live TV broadcast of the first presidential debate on September 26th, there is no question that the Dems are growing more and more desperate with every new twist. I'm still reporting from Washington. Good day.